Fundamentals of FFF and FGF. Material extrusion 3D printing is a method of extruding thermoplastics, and over the past couple of decades has been creating new possibilities for part designs. It enabled engineers to think outside of traditional manufacturing like machining, casting, and molding, and allowed the freedom to create more complex geometries. In a way, 3D printing has been both disruptive and incremental when it comes to innovation. Disruptive in the fact that's different from how we think of manufacturing today, but also incremental as we're utilizing existing methods for new technology. Within material extrusion, two promising methods have emerged and are being used today for rapid prototyping, tooling, and final part production. Fused filament fabrication is a process of extruding a thin strand or filament of thermoplastic material through a liquefier and depositing it layer upon layer in a predetermined tool path. The mechanics of the extrusion system are quite simple, similar to what you would see in traditional arc welding. The strand of filament is being pushed or pulled into a set of direct drive rollers in a pinch system format. This feeds the material into a heating zone and then through a brass or steel nozzle. Nozzle sizes can be customizable and changed for each part. Fused granulate fabrication, FGF, or AKA pellet printing, is a similar process to FFF, but instead of using a strand of thermoplastic, it utilizes granules of the material, meaning pellets. The mechanics are still simple, but now incorporates a robust barrel and screw extrusion system, similar to traditional plastic extrusion or injection molding. Pellets are gravity fed into a feed section where it makes contact with the screw. A servo motor drives the screw, which conveys the pellets through heated barrel. The barrel has multiple heating sections, allowing the material to progressively heat up and melt. And similar to FFF, the material is then forced through brass or steel nozzles. Again, these nozzles are also customizable to fit to the part or application. Now let's recap and compare FFF to FGF. With the feedstock, FFF uses filament, strand of thermoplastic material, and FGF uses the granules, or the pellets. We should make note that filament material for FFF starts out as pellets, and that FGF skips the additional manufacturing process. Theoretically, materials went through one less heating cycle, and one can claim that in pellet form, the material will process easier and could very well perform better during and after the printing process. The pellets will be cheaper compared to filament simply based on one less manufacturing process. Next, we have the material base. As Greg will capture this later on in the webinar, availability of types of thermoplastic ranges within FFF and FGF. There's a wide range of materials to choose from within the FFF process, but an even broader range in the FGF due to the way it's manufactured and supplied. When we talk about throughput, we're talking about the rate of flow, the amount of material extruded in a particular time frame. For both FFF and FGF, we use pounds per hour. Thinking about how FFF processes the strands of thermoplastic, the limiting factor when it comes to throughput is the ability to heat and melt the material. Even though the cross section of the filament is small, the heating zone is short and it can only transfer heat so fast. For FGF, the limiting factor is the size of the extruder and the screw design. To give everyone a sense of throughput for each process, FFF could range from 0.005 pounds per hour to a quarter pound per hour. And for FGF, it could range from half pound per hour to 20 pounds per hour. The diameter of the nozzle and the type of thermoplastic directly affect the throughput. And later on in the webinar, we'll capture other variables that can make a difference. Resolution refers to the layer height and road width or bead width of the extruded material. With the smaller nozzles and using thin strands of filament, you can achieve a higher level of resolution with FFF printing. Layer heights can range from 0.15 to 0.4 millimeters, and the width can range from 0.3 to 1 millimeter. FGF has a lower resolution, with a layer range of 1 to 5 millimeters and a width range of 2 to 10 millimeters. Parts produced by FFF tend to be small. Not saying that you can't print a three foot by three foot part with FFF, but due to the resolution and throughput, the time to produce a large part may not be economical or even efficient. The time could be 200 times longer than on an FGF machine, and you can run a higher risk of failure on longer print cycles. FGF lends itself to larger parts. You could print a large part in just a couple hours. Parts printed using FGF will have less features and be considered low complexity, based on the lower resolution and wider extrusion paths. With FFF, you can print more detailed parts with complicated features, again, due to the smaller nozzles and bead width. Next, we have toolpath. Toolpath refers to the program path through space that the extruder will follow to print the desired part geometry. 
Similar to CNC machining technology, they use CAD-CAM software to derive the G-codes for tool head movements. For 3D printing, we use slicing programs. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking a part, we're slicing it into individual layers for a 2D format, stacking them layer upon layer to create a 3D part. With FFF, since the part complexity and resolution is high, the toolpath is also complex and has a lot of movements. The excessive movements ultimately reduce the throughput. For FGF, the toolpath movement is simpler, but more time and focus is needed in the design phase before printing to avoid the toolpath crossing over itself. Technically, this should be considered for both processes, but the results and shortcomings for FGF is a magnitude greater. If the extruder head lays down material in a particular path, and the material cools and hardens, you'd want to avoid that print head crossing over the hardened material. This would cause some serious damage to the system. Lastly, we have temperatures. The key for FFF printing is to get more heat into the material so you can print faster, and so the material doesn't crystallize or cool too quickly. The biggest factor in FFF is preventing the material to cool down before the subsequent layers are printed. You have to remember that material extrusion 3D printing is anisotropic. The X and Y direction is stronger than the Z direction when it comes to tensile stress. That's because it's a laminate process. And in laminate processes, you care about the bonding of the layers. And for the material to best stick to itself, the material has to be at an equivalent state. For FGF, the problem is the opposite. We want to get heat out of the material. Due to the screw-driven process, friction occurs and shear heating is a result. The heat put into the material from the screw will likely be greater than the temperature of the barrel. This is called the melt temp. With the throughput being so high in FGF, if the temperature of the material is too great, initial printed layers could be too weak to hold up the subsequent layers. Sagging will occur in the printed layers and could cause poor quality or worse, a failed print. There's a lot to consider when thinking about FFF and FGF technology, and knowing the material available is the first step. So here's Greg to explain more about it. ESM is striving to push additive manufacturing to its full potential by drawing on decades of experience in 3D printing technologies, deep application development expertise, and performance materials to help manufacturers change the way they design and manufacture products. The AM group is leveraging the portfolio of our sister division, DSM Engineering Materials, to create the solids products which currently consist of filaments, pellets, and powders. The base resins being utilized are highlighted inside the pyramid. The core of the products are based on nylon and polyester chemistries with an emphasis on higher performance polymers. As noted in the introduction, we are emphasizing the creation of sustainable products based on recycled or bio-based content. Utilizing this portfolio of engineering thermoplastics gives the ability to meet more stringent application requirements versus the DSM SOMOS liquid photopolymer since the thermoplastic materials have higher mechanical and thermal properties as well as a greater resistance to chemicals. This makes them well suited for more stringent applications in industrial, transportation, and electronics markets. Our solids portfolio of filaments currently consists of seven products, four nylon-based materials, and three polyester-based. The nylon-based materials are highlighted by two higher performance products. The first is a carbon fiber filled triple six, which offers three and a half times the stiffness and two and a half times the strength of our standard nylon triple six. The second product is a flame retardant nylon triple six, which has a UL blue card listing. The polyester-based materials are highlighted by a PET polyester, which offers a higher level of dimensional stability, and two copolyester-based materials. The highest temperature performing product is Arnatel ID2060HT, which has been tested at elevated temperatures of 190 Celsius for 500 hours and 175 Celsius for 1000 hours, which makes it suitable for most stringent underhood applications. The pellet portfolio consists of one commercial product, which is a highly filled PET polyester. The current plan is to launch at least three new pellet grades this year. When comparing the two print processes, there are some key differentiators for FGF we would like to emphasize. The first is higher production speeds. Based on higher throughput, we see the ability to print up to 200 times faster than traditional printing. Material choices are also much broader since the type and quantity of fillers that can be used across multiple resin systems are greatly expanded since the creation of filament is bypassed. As a result, total part cost is greatly reduced, which makes this printing technology more competitive with traditional manufacturing processes. Lastly, the amount of time spent in the development cycle can be decreased when utilizing faster print times, resulting in faster iterations of part designs.